Let's start with uh, a new subject of uh, sharpening the little 3 16 cutters that we use on boring bars and in the hollowing systems. You could leave it in the boring bar and uh, hold the whole boring bar up on the tool rest, but I usually just take the cutter right out of the swivel assembly and I'm going to take it over to the grinder. We don't put it on the tool rest. If we try to put it on the tool rest, the tool rest is not uh, stable enough. Uh, you can get sucked down underneath there. Your fingers are too close to it. So rather than putting the tool on the tool rest, I'm going to put my hand on the tool rest. And now I've got control of the angles and, and the movement of the tool because my hand's a stabilizing force on the tool rest. Now I come up and I'm going to change the angle of it at the tip and I'm going to line up the tip bevel so that the tip is going to be ground. And then when I come over to the side, I, if you noticed, I've radiused over very small radius over both corners of this grinding wheel so this is not a sharp corner anymore. When I come over to the side, I can twist it, I can roll the cutter in my fingers and find the spot that the bevel is going to be lined up. So I just dress the bevel along the side, come across there, I'm going to line up again this side by twisting it and come across here and just very gently dress the bevel. What I'm looking for is that the sparks are going to come up over the top and I can see them right on the, the sharp edge. If the sparks are going down underneath, then it's not sharp yet and I have to change the angle to get that, that uh, bevel right directly against the, the surface of this grinding wheel so that it makes it keeps a straight line there. When we come to the grinder with a, a handheld grinding situation, we're not thinking about grinding the tool. What we're thinking about is dressing the bevel very lightly and then the edge is going to get sharp. Okay, put my hand on the tool rest. I'm going to line up the front bevel. You see the sparks? Hope you can see them. All right, and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to twist it in my fingers and see the sparks. Put them over here, twist it in my fingers, see the sparks. I'm going to put my hand on the tool rest again. I'm going to line up the bevel and the camera now is on an angle that I can see that tip bevel nicely. And I'm going to watch for the sparks to come over the top. There they are, see them? Now that's sharp. I'm going to come over to the side, watch the sparks come over the top. Come over to this side, watch the sparks. I'm going to twist it in my wrist so it's lined up right. Watch the sparks come over the top. That's all there is to it. Now, if I'm doing this right, I'm just dressing the bevel lightly. If it does get hot, I can just use a piece of a towel or something to hang on to it. Now, that's the old way. John Jordan has a grinding jig that I use, and we're going to set up just like we would the bowl gouge grind so that we've got a half inch setback. I'm going to tighten it down. All right. And we take it over to the grinder. And if we look at the, the Wolverine jig, the arm of the Wolverine jig, I've drilled a little eighth inch hole in the corner of the jig there. Now this becomes my pivot point so that the angle, I'd have to take the tool rest off here, so that the angle is going to be correct to use the jig just like it would be on a bowl gouge to dress the bevel lightly. The whole idea of a jig is to go back on the exact same repeatable angle and we don't have to get our fingers so close with the Jordan jig that, that John has allowed me to, uh, to sell with him and for him. Uh, we both have them in our catalogs and uh, so it saves the tool life um, and you don't have to get your fingers so close and, and do it by hand.